Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Gardening. My name's Matthew Watrich and this is our new dog, Sugar. My wife and I just got this cute little Maltese poodle a couple of days ago and so she's gonna be joining us in some of our future videos. We're doing a backyard garden tour today. We're gonna to let Sugar run around and play while we're taking a look at all the different plants that we're growing in June of 2021. So this is gonna be a really fun one. I've got a new fruit tree, this banana tree that I'm gonna be doing a video on shortly our sunflower plant, which is just getting ready to bloom, our peach tree, which has got cucumbers and all sorts of other things, all of our container gardening on our patio here, and of course, our backyard garden bed. And so there's a whole bunch of different things to talk about, but before we get started, I want to address a couple of things. My wife has very recently started a new YouTube channel called CR Watrich, and I'd like you guys to go check it out after this video. If you take a look in the description, I'll also have a card in the video just so you guys can see what she's talking about. She'll be discussing the book that she wrote last year about how she uh, left a cult and found freedom in Christ, as well as just a variety of topics that relate to Christianity and the church addressing a variety of topics, including mental illness. So go check that out. And with that, let's get started with our backyard garden tour. All right, so as usual, we're gonna get started by talking about my backyard in-ground garden bed. So I love this in-ground garden bed. It's been really cool, but it's had some soil issues over the past year that I kind of want to address. And so before talking about anything, if you've seen one of my recent videos, I made a video about harvesting celery. So I recently cut down the celery stalk that was right over here. And this one, I'm not sure why it's leaning over so much, but a whole bunch of my celery plants turned out great. They've done awesome. They're taking really strange shapes that I'm not used to seeing celery take, like this that's going on here. And they have even gone out to seed. So you can kind of tell there's some white flowers at the top of these celery stalks here. My GoPro doesn't really do a good job of doing close up, but if you turn it up to 4K, you should be able to see them pretty well. And I assume these seeds are gonna turn, or these flowers rather, are going to produce seeds shortly. So we're gonna take some of those seeds, try to do a little bit of hydroponics inside at some point soon. But for the celery that's a little shorter, I'm gonna cut it back and eat it. And then we're gonna put in some nice new mulched soil across all of this. You can see that a lot of this stuff that I'm working with here from last year, some of it's soil, but most of it's like this wood chip mulch that I just totally regret using. The plants absolutely hate it. I think it's probably the primary reason why these really sad, you know, cauliflower and cabbage here just never really turned out to produce any, um, I almost said fruit, to produce any food, to produce any cabbages or cauliflower. But this in-ground bed's great. It's treated my peach tree over here really well. This is one of the first fruit trees that I got in the fall of, what am I saying? In the spring of 2020. And it didn't fruit last year because it was brand new, but it's produced three pretty nice peaches. Right now they're about the size of my thumb. So they're still pretty small, but thankfully predators haven't gotten to them yet. They haven't had any wasps or moths or slugs messing with them. And I'm hoping it stays that way for about another month because it looks like they're gonna need a little bit of additional time to produce. Around back here, if you guys recall in April, I talked about this a little bit. This is cilantro, but I guess at this point I should really say it's coriander. So it's gone through its life cycle, which we got to see last year, but I didn't make a video about. And cilantro, of course, you recognize as being a much smaller plant that's kind of like a garnish for, I don't know what people put on, baked potatoes and stuff. But what will happen if you leave it out here long enough, it'll eventually grow really tall in this kind of weird way and then dry out. And these brown seeds that you get from it are coriander. And so I, these, in fact, this plant over here is one that I bought from the hardware store recently, but this plant right here is just a coriander seed that fell and went through its entire life cycle of growing up real big and producing all these new coriander seeds, which of course can be, can be grown into, or excuse me, ground into coriander powder or can just be thrown into the bed. And those will probably wind up being new cilantro plants next spring. Honestly, even late in the summer, they grow pretty quickly. But I'm excited to see what happens with these. I'm thinking I'm going to bring them inside. I'm gonna grind some into powder. I'm gonna put some in containers. I'm gonna replant some and we'll see what grows and what doesn't. Moving on, I have this strawberry plant. Now, 
This strawberry plant has made multiple appearances in different videos. I've used beer to capture slugs that were trying to eat my strawberries. I've done a strawberry harvest. And right now we're just kind of in an in-between phase. So the strawberry life cycle, they grow these white flowers, which you can kind of see there's one here, there's one over there, and they're doing really well right now. I think this vine right here best captures their life cycle. They grow these flowers and out of the center eventually come strawberries. Of course, these are green and really young, but there are a couple of red ones here. However, I haven't put out a beer for the slugs in a while. And so you can see they've been uh, digging through my strawberries pretty, pretty quickly. What you have to do is get some elevation on these. A lot of people like to put them in baskets. I think I need to figure out a way to get my fruit off of the ground. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to collect much or I'm going to have to give them a beer every day or two to make them stop eating my strawberries. In any circumstance, I've really enjoyed growing these strawberries. I found it to be a lot of fun. And uh, when you actually are able to stop the slugs, they turn out great. But one thing the slugs don't mess with too much, they eat the foliage off of these plants here. So if I drop my camera a bit lower, you can see some of what we're working with. We've got these green habanero plants right now. And they, I think they're gonna orange up here in the next month. The audio got messed up in this section, but I was just saying that habaneros are one of my favorite peppers and I'm looking forward to our peach tree harvest. We've got about 10 habanero peppers here. and I think we might be able to make some peach habanero jam. And habaneros are one of my favorite peppers. They make awesome curry. They make um, a variety of different things. And in fact, I've tried to grow them from seed inside the house, which has turned out super well. I, in fact, I have a sapling right now. I don't have a, uh, what's going on, sugar? What's going on? I think she just wants attention. <laughs> I have a hydroponic station inside where I have a habanero sapling that has turned out super well, which I'll show you guys here in a little bit. And I would highly recommend trying to grow these. I love hot peppers and these are the best. It probably goes without saying at this point, but all of these plants need, you need some sort of fencing material. I can't stress this enough. We have bunny rabbits in my neighborhood and I put up a couple of these cheap one or two dollar little fence posts from the Home Depot. They're just, you know, super cheap wood and chicken wire. I don't know how much this whole setup cost me in total, but it saved me pretty much everything that I've planted that's not higher than two feet off the ground. We have these rabbits come through and they would have eaten all of this. The slugs are bad enough, but the rabbits are a whole, a whole different situation. So highly recommend you guys get yourself some chicken wire. If you have an in-ground bed or a raised bed, the rabbits can easily just jump up a few inches. And this has saved most of my crop. So we're going to move on from our in-ground garden bed here in a little bit. But I'm super pleased with the way this has turned out. I'm very excited for the rest of June and July. Um, you can expect videos about mostly hot peppers and peaches coming soon. I don't know if you're going to see anything about pumpkins until closer to October. I mean, you'll probably see them in some of the monthly updates, but I'm going to tear up all of the winter gardening stuff here in a couple of weeks, and we're going to get all of our pumpkins planted for the fall. So moving on, the first thing we're going to talk about is actually back here off screen. So this is a tiny little banana tree. I put up this, uh, this little set of stones around it because it's more of a mental barrier than anything else. Sugar likes to bite at this. You can see she's, uh, she's been making a little bit of progress with this leaf over here, but this is a banana tree, which my friend Jacob Weaver gave me. He lives across the neighborhood and he had some fruit trees that he needed to get rid of because of his pool pump. And so he gave me this one and another one, which is on the other side of the yard. This one right here. And it's super cool because in addition to the much larger peach tree, I have a cell phone in that window over there taped to the inside of the window that's been doing a 100 day time lapse since March 13th. And if my numbers are correct, we are 80 days into that. And so when I set up this, this banana tree, which I just planted here like two or three days ago, you can see this leaf is starting to unfold here. I think I'm going to wind up with a pretty cool banana tree time lapse as well. Let me get a better angle so you can see what I'm talking about. It's really, when I got it, this was just a little pole, and now I can see it's kind of unfolding like a, like a little scroll. And looks great. I'm sure I will have all sorts of feedback about my transplant dig circles not being super big. 
Again, this came out from the area behind my buddy's. Uh, it was like a hot tub heater or something. And so we had to be super careful with digging. So our, our hole is really small, but it's been here for a few days now. And I think it's going to turn out pretty cool over the next few days. I also planted some sunflower seeds, which in addition to the banana tree, obviously the banana tree's been here for two days. The sunflower seed's been here all the way since last fall. So the 100 day time lapse is going to capture this guy coming up out of the ground and becoming the much larger plant that it is today. For scale, that's probably about three feet. I mean, I don't have anything for scale. I'm just telling you it's three feet. Oh, fence, fence for scale. It's about three feet. And it looks like it's starting to grow its first flower, which I'm super excited for. I can kind of see something in there looking like it wants to fold out. I think this is going to look really cool in July. Moving on to the peach tree bed. So the peach tree is the crowning jewel of my backyard. My favorite plant. Whoa, I almost tripped over this, this, uh, this fire pit I have here. Okay, the peach tree is my favorite thing. I got this peach tree from my buddy Parker, who lives out in Blanco. We transplanted it last November, if memory serves, and it's been doing awesome. I don't know how many peaches are on this tree. I don't bother to count, but just at a cursory glance, Again, I know it doesn't do close up super well. You can see here, there's probably six or seven on each branch and probably about a dozen branches with fruit on it in total. Right now, these peaches are, they're not super big. Here's my thumb for scale, about as big as the other ones. I mean, some of them are getting pretty large though. These right here, you can see, they're not super small, but Texas are, Texas peaches are iconic. I don't know what kind of peach tree this is, but any kind of peach tree is a lot of fun to have in your, in your backyard. I aspire one day to have much more space that I can garden with. I currently live on point zero. Uh, let me say that right. I live on 0 0.1 acres. So this little tiny 600 square foot backyard is the full realm of the space that I have to grow fruit trees, which leaves me with our little fruit tree corner. Maybe one day we'll have more. And on that day, I hope, I hope to have a whole bunch of peach trees that look like this one. So very happy with the way this has turned out. And I'm trying to kind of experiment and see what works with peach trees and what doesn't. I've had friends tell me that this next thing I'm going to talk about is super cool. And others say it's probably not a really good idea. But you can see here, I have some vines kind of climbing up my peach tree. And I put down some wire to allow them to climb. These are cucumber vines. I reach over here, you can see a very strangely shaped cucumber. It's kind of like spherical almost. I think it's just still developing. But these are cucumber vines, which I planted back in March, and I've been letting them climb up these little wires. Uh, to the extent of my knowledge, it's only a few cucumbers. You can see ones right there, and the slugs do try to eat on them, but they're growing really well. And you can see they're trying to kind of climb up into the tree my hope is that they will wrap around some of the branches. And again, I've had my friends tell me, hey, that's gonna be too much weight on the branches. Um, I guess we'll see what happens. But in any circumstance, I'm super excited to see what becomes of this. And you can see all sorts of different little pests and stuff. Like here's some sort of black and yellow beetle on the inside of this flower. I've been told there's, oh, and here's a, a budding cucumber. Here's what they look like when they're forming. I've had all sorts of people tell me, you know, Try capsaicin powder spray, which is basically just like pepper spray. Um, try, try, you know, this, try that to keep everything away from it. And, you know, I'm going to just let them keep doing their thing and see what happens. And of course, with a big peach tree in Texas, you, of course, have to have your blue bonnet bed, which is so strange because today is June 2nd. It's so weird to have blue bonnets this late in the season. I don't know why we still have them. I guess they've just been I, I planted these in, I think, October or November, so I would have expected them to fade with everything else in May, but they're all still here, which is fine by me. I love blue bonnets, and I can kind of see that the seeds, the seed pouches are beginning to, you know, gray and brown up just a little bit, an indicator that they're about to die and be sown. I also have uh, some neighborhood cats that like to hide out over here so you can see their little their little walkway but all in all I love this raised bed it's turned out super well and here in the next month stay tuned for my peach tree harvest I think that's going to be really cool also finally we're going to talk about some patio gardening 
Hopefully the contrast balancing is okay with this. I have to stand at certain angles to make sure there's not a uh, light washout. But I have all sorts of plants on my patio that are kind of atypical from what most people might have. I'm going to just start left to right talking about these. And I also should probably open by mentioning I am planning on building a stand probably like over here along the back fence for these because I can see that this is just getting to the point. We have two chairs here. That chair is usable. <laughs> that chair is just becoming buried in the jungle of my backyard patio. But moving left to right, this one is probably one of my favorites. This is super cool. This is a sweet potato bucket. So I have a five gallon Home Depot bucket here, which for reference is about a foot and a half tall. And this is growing Yukon gold, to, uh, not tomatoes, potatoes. And so I planted these uh, in mid-April. It's only been about a month and a half and they've done so good. This would have been a perfect thing to time lapse. I just wasn't aware. Uh, of how well they were doing by the time I got a chance to time lapse it. So if you take a look at the bottom of the bucket, you can see all these roots that are coming out of the bottom of that bucket. It looks amazing. I They say that these grow over the course of 90 days. I might let them go for a little bit longer than that. Um, actually, I think we're gonna let Sugar inside because she's, she's trying to dig and she's trying to say hello to the other dogs, but she hasn't gotten all her vaccines yet. So she shouldn't be digging. Let me take her inside real quick. And uh, so back to this. Um, so this bucket here is super cool. I did a sweet potato harvest video. I'm trying to remember when I did that. I think it was kind of like mid-May or something. But I waited 120 days, which is what I read online you're supposed to do for sweet potatoes. These, of course, are Yukon Gold. They're not sweet potatoes. And a lot of people told me I dug that up early. They said that if I left it in a little bit longer, they would have developed more. And so I figure, even though these are only supposed to be 90 days, I might give them 120 just to see what happens. When the leaves start to really wither, I'm going to go and empty out the bucket and we'll see how that turns out. But they're not the only potato harvest going on. Um, Mid-April, I also planted some more sweet potato slips. And I cut these off the, t the sweet potato which is different than the way that I did the last one where I just planted the whole potato. These are each individual sweet potato slips. I think there's one, two, three, four, five in total. And they look great. My main concern is my dog and other animals coming and biting at the bucket. But I really enjoyed growing sweet potatoes. I'm going to leave these in longer than I left the last ones in because yeah, you can see a little bit of root formation on the bottom there, but uh, the last one's clearly needed more time, and I want to make sure these guys get the time that they need. These two white containers in the back, there and there, are featuring avocado plants. So here's one we recently grew, and it's doing great. This is, I guess, at this point, four or five months old, and here is our old star, the original avocado seed from the how to grow an avocado seed into a sapling video that I made last October, or maybe even September. It's still kicking. Uh, it, it suffered a pretty rough winter. And you've probably seen some updates from it in previous videos, but it's still doing great. And I mean, you can see it's putting out new leaves and whatnot. We're excited to see if we can get a nice grow lamp and stick these in the garage. Hopefully people don't think I'm doing anything illegal, but <laughs> we're gonna put all these plants in the garage this winter and. Maybe if our winter isn't so brutal, they're going to power through. Up here, we have another pepper plant. These are habaneros, so similar to what we looked at in the in-ground garden bed. These are habaneros, but they don't get direct sunlight. Obviously, they're on my patio, so the sun rises over there. It shines on them for most of the morning. But they're only getting partial sun, which I think is why they're kind of suffering. Also, they're, of course, in a container, so they don't get as much exposure as the ones in the bed to root formation. But they're, they're starting to grow some stuff. This is a little baby habanero. And I thought I saw one other one today. I mean, that one's not formed enough to really, to really call it started, but I'm excited for these. I think they might put out some peppers. The jalapeno plant has put out several already and it looks like it's getting ready for round two. See a couple form in there and uh, it looks great. I've had a bunch of people ask me about my mango, uh, my mango plant from last year. Well, bad news. So I guess the lack of light, the cold, you know, I brought it inside as much as possible. But even during the winter storm, we lost heat for, I guess, like a week. 
and it died. So this is a new one. This is a new avocado, or I'm sorry, mango seed, mango sapling that I've planted. We'll see how it turns out. I don't have super high hopes for the mangoes. I think it's just matter of fact, people think of Texas as hot and by proxy tropical, but Texas is not tropical. Texas is a place where, as you've seen from my winter videos, it gets really, really cold. And I'm, I'm not even in uh, North Texas. I mean, Austin, Central Texas. So it's not really a place for tropical plants. That being said, the banana plants grew super well with no covering at all, which really surprised me. So, you know, there are some tropical, tropical-ish things you can grow. Mangoes is kind of pushing it, but I like the challenge. I think it's a lot of fun. Speaking of tropical plants, I have this pineapple plant, which I planted and I thought was dead. Like you just look at it, it's a little green, but it's mostly browning. And today I discovered that it died and it's regrowing a new pineapple pup from its dead crown, which I thought was super cool. I have a whole bunch of pineapple crowns inside. I'm going to get new containers for them and bring them outside, which is also why I'm going to have to build some more space for containers because our, our patio is getting really full. But the last thing on the patio that I care to say anything about is this bucket here. It's just the end of a sweet potato. I'm gonna be adding slips to it over time, but I just wanna get more practice with growing sweet potatoes in containers. I eventually aspire to do bigger containers than just buckets, but I'm just kind of experimenting to figure out um, how it's done. So this the sweet potato, uh, I, I wanna say cutting, as you can see there, there's probably about seven or eight slips. Uh, attached to the end of one potato. It's just like two inches of the end of a potato. So it's not the whole potato. I think it's going to do well. It looks like it's already starting to take root and we'll just have to see how it turns out over the next couple of, uh, of months. But that being said, that's my backyard as of June 2nd. It's looking good. We love our containers and our, our fruit trees and our sunflower. I think this has a lot of potential to really have July shaping up for an exciting garden tour with the sunflower blooming, most likely a peach harvest and the bananas developing and whatnot. Our in-ground garden bed's been a lot of fun and I'm also excited to plant some pumpkins in here. I think that that's gonna be really cool and make this fall, um, give us some good content for this fall. But um, yep, that's what we have in our backyard. As of June 2nd, I'm gonna go inside and talk about some of the plants we're propagating inside. All right, so on a couple of different occasions, I've shown off some of the plants I have inside. We're not gonna be doing like an indoor garden tour or anything today, but I do wanna point out, this is my Monstera that I've included in my most recent indoor garden tour. And look, it's growing an additional leaf. It's really cool. I really wanna time-lapse this, but again, I only have one additional iPhone, which is over there in the window filming the peach tree. I think my wife might get a new phone soon and we'll We'll post up her other phone to film houseplants growing over time. But what I really wanted to point out over here, I have these four pineapple crowns, each one. So the pineapple crown outside that I showed you guys was from the store. Each one of these pineapple crowns is from Maui Gold Pineapples from my pineapple tour on our honeymoon that we went on. And you can see, I'm gonna make a much more detailed video that explains how to regrow these pineapple crowns. This one's kind of growing roots, but these two here, uh, this one's growing well, and then this one has been in longer than the others. And you can really tell from the tips of the pineapple crown, like these here, the older tips are like kind of dry, but the new ones are really very full of life all the way down to the end. And you can kind of see that trend running for each one of these. I'm very excited for these. I'm planning on putting them in some containers. I've been told they need about two feet of vertical soil. so. We have to get some new containers for these, but when we do, we're going to repot them. And like I said, I'll make a dedicated video explaining everything that I've done. It's been a progress, um, a work in progress, probably about a month or a month and a half now. So it should be really cool. Moving on, we have all sorts of little fun house plants. And this is that habanero sapling that I was mentioning. I put a whole bunch of seeds in a bag and just planted one. And it's turning out pretty cool. I'm gonna make a habanero from seed video at some point in the near future. That one's still a to be determined. And of course, we have our Fitonia, our Pothos, and our Wandering Jew over here by the front door. We still haven't found a place for these guys yet. They're really beautiful, and the main problem is all the places we want for them, there's not a whole lot of sunlight, and so they do the best here. 
I'm not exactly sure whether these are gonna go in the long run, but this isn't an indoor house plants video. I mean, at this point, that little section was, but <laughs> this is supposed to be more of an outdoor video. So it's after five. So our tomato plant is off in, I don't know how bad the wind's affecting the camera. Our tomato plant's off in the shade. We get in the right place so the light balancing's not too jacked up. This is our tomato plant. And with it being June, now that it's getting into the 90s, it looks like it's produced its last crop of the spring and the next crop will come in the fall. But you can see there's still a ton of tomatoes on it. I've made a couple shorts where I've shown off how many tomatoes this thing produced. It was well over 100 tomatoes, honestly, maybe 200 this last spring. It was about three crops of about 40 or 50 each. And so this was really cool. I, I love this tomato plant. It was $15 for well over $15 worth of tomatoes. I highly recommend y'all get these. If I had more space, I'd probably buy a dozen of these and just give away tomatoes. But we also have some habaneros in our front yard garden bed. And these plants, they're doing okay, but as you can see, these are punched full of holes way more than the other ones. The slugs really got to this one. And this one over here, you can see it has some habaneros. But of course, these have just suffered more because of all the slugs that are in this front yard garden bed. So of course our green onions and our cilantro are still doing great from the past couple of months. I love the way that this is turning out. Hopefully this continues to uh, be a good spot to grow vegetables like this. But what I really wanted to kind of get to is this stuff over here. So this is one of my hanging plants. This is a petunia, which is a perennial, but it's, it's symptomatic of a bigger problem that I'm having with my wildflowers, which is just these beautiful plants that were doing amazing during April are not doing amazing during June. And the sun is getting to them. I don't know if there's other pests that are getting to them, but this hanging plant over here died completely and has been regrowing back over the past month, which leaves me in a bit of a conundrum, and I'm not sure what to do about it. On one hand, I have these beautiful blooming flowering plants here and it's adjacent to this like blighted sunlight death uh, crimson clover which of course just blooms in the spring and in the summer it drops its seeds you can see these beautiful crimson clover blooms are now just basically seeds which can be pulled down and i guess i just need to go through and pull the seeds off this and get a weed whacker and come and cut this stuff down because i have these dead brown ugly plants adjacent to somehow blue bonnets which blue bonnets should only be blooming really in texas from april like late april to early may but somehow i wound up with all of these as late as june 2nd and that's great but the stuff next to them isn't looking so hot so i need to come through here with a weed whacker get these seeds pulled down and get this whole front yard looking a lot better it's not just a problem in these two beds it's also a problem over here surrounding my fig tree. So this was beautiful in April. I have some film that I, I uploaded on Easter showing off all the blue bonnets and crimson clover and everything else. And now we're just left with this kind of brown, ugly mess. And it's not all brown and ugly, you know, obviously I have some blooming flowers over here, but like, especially down around the fig tree, like you look around here, there's no figs on the tree yet. They're probably not gonna come out for another month or two. And in the meantime, we've got like all of that and it'd be one thing if I had these yellow flowers blooming on all sides, but facing the street, I've got just more cursed crimson clover that I'm not really sure what to do with. I don't want to take a weed whacker and just knock it all down though, because over here I have my wildflower bed surrounding my olive tree. And this is much more vibrant and lively. We have, you know, colorful cornflowers and all sorts of different blooming plants and whatnot, but I, I just, I feel compelled to do something about this. I don't know if you guys could put any suggestions in the comments. I could trim it by hand, but it's getting to the point where like even the grass is invading the wildflower bed and I just don't want to let this go unkempt. I think my HOA is going to get on to me about it, but just because of the winter storm, I don't really think we're going to be getting much fruit this year. Figs maybe, but olives, this tree is just trying to recover. If I push this back, you can kind of see what's going on here. I've showed this off in a couple of different videos of winter storm aftermath stuff. And again, this tree's just trying to, trying to stay alive. But the apple tree is, uh, or not the apple tree, I'm sorry, the fig tree is definitely gonna be producing figs this year, probably more if I get all these wildflowers out of the way. 
And the apple tree is doing wonderful. It's not actually, it's a Fuji apple tree, so I need to graft in something if I really want it to pollinate. But it just looks great. And the petunias over here, I guess the slugs don't know about them, so they look great as well. But that's all I really wanted to show off for this episode. Uh, I just want to do a garden tour, walk around, and talk about all the different things that I'm growing. Stay tuned for our peach tree harvest and a habanero harvest. Those might be just one video. I might do two. I don't know yet. But things are going really well. I just need to figure out a couple of plans to make my wildflower beds look good and to um, you know, protect what little uh, vegetables we have in the front yard before the slugs get to the rest of them. So anyway, again, if you have any constructive criticism, please feel free to share that in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks again for watching Austin, Texas Gardening and have a great rest of your day.